friends, nature nerds, and journalers. There's no excuse for not nature journaling, even on a day when it's really smoky outside. I don't know if you can tell, but it's super smoky outside, so good excuse not to be outside. But there's actually things inside that we can nature journal. And I'm also on the very last page of my journal here, so I'm actually gonna do today's entry on this side. I am doing Amy's awesome nature journal challenge, and so today I decided to show that you can actually have fun nature journaling inside your house with things that you have inside. At first, I was thinking that I was going to cut open and nature journal about this chila coyote here, but I realized that not everybody has chila coyotes lying around inside their house. And then I thought maybe I would do this kaigua here, but I realized a lot of people don't have these inside their house either. So I decided to choose this apple and I'm going to nature journal it and I decided there's a lot of different options on here and a couple of these could work for this apple but I think I'm going to use the cut one and then I can use slice on something else later but I just wanted to show that it is possible to have fun nature journaling and I'm going to set a timer and probably aim for about 35 minutes but first I'm going to do a quick sketch of the outside and get started. Also, I don't need to use this huge knife to, to cut open the apple anymore, so that's good. Different sides. So I'm gonna draw it from a couple different angles and use some relative measurements to show the asymmetry of it. And then I'm gonna start, form I'm already formulating questions. Part of Amy's reminder here with these question marks is that Questions are very powerful, a very powerful part of nature journaling and I think they separate nature journaling from just drawing in nature because when you're using questions, that curiosity not only fuels your motivation to continue, but it also helps you learn in a much more powerful way. So for example, an apple is kind of boring. As you can as you already tell from my intro, I really like exotic things and I get a big dopamine rush from novelty. But if you use questions, you can find novelty in things that are familiar, such as an apple. And so one of the things that I'm going to start, I'm already asking questions in my mind about is these holes and their relationship to the center of the apple. Next thing that you can do, which is also a hallmark of nature journaling, is to do, to draw the object at different scales. So for example, if I'm interested in these holes, after I have sort of the layout drawing of the apple, then I can zoom in on these holes and draw a closer drawing. One good way to do that would be to make a box like this with an arrow pointing to the part that you're going to expand. And you can see here, I used this sort of grid and these dotted lines to show the relative location of the stem. And the stem is what's actually connected to the core of the apple and the center of the apple. And you can see here that it's about one third of the way in and two thirds of this side of the apple is away from the stem, which I found kind of interesting. And so far it looks like the holes are actually in alignment with that. Now, if you know anything about coddling moths, you might see that I'm already having a little bit of confirmation bias in the way that I'm predicting um, the location of these holes. And so this is where you have to be aware of confirmation bias and theory blindness. So when you have a theory, and this is why the questions are more useful than theories, especially at first, if you've noticed yourself starting to develop a theory, and this is more of a problem for people who have more experience in nature or who have more ideas or knowledge or facts about nature is we start formulating theories before we've been observing for very long. So I noticed with myself, and this is something you can use your journal for, is the, the metacognition and self-awareness. I should write down, I'm already creating a theory about these holes lining up with the core of the apple because coddling moths primarily eat the seeds in an apple, not the flesh. So that could become a problem and could actually prevent me from noticing other other observations that are telling me a different story. So be careful of confirmation bias and theory blindness.
That's one of the cool things though about nature journaling is that being an expert in nature is actually not always an advantage and that's what I think makes it so accessible is that once you realize that you don't need to be the most experienced nature journaler in the group to make good valid observations. In fact, if you're new and you don't know a bunch of different theories, those things um, won't get in your way of making novel observations that could turn out to be the next big the next big thing and you could come up with an explanation that no one else had noticed before because everyone else was too blinded by all of the things that they thought that they knew about nature. So when you go out and you nature journal, pay attention to the people who are new or to kids because a lot of times they ask questions that the rest of us already take for granted. I'm going to make sure to draw the bottom part of the apple too and at first I was going to cut into it and skip this part but it's good to pay attention to the things that you might normally skip that might be where the new information is hiding. When you're doing watercolor on something like this it's good to do a wash where you paint the yellow underneath everything and it, this is one of those ways where art techniques actually teach you about the way things are in reality because the yellow does in a lot of ways go underneath the rest of this red. You can see there's bits there. So what you should do is you should get yellow and paint the whole thing. This is the easiest way to do it. Um, is to paint the whole thing yellow and it's, if you're doing multiple drawings of the same apple like I should have done all of these washes in one go and then you wait for it to dry um, and then while it's drying you can do other work and then you can come back and paint the red on top. If you want you could probably try to do a wet on wet because the wet on wet technique with watercolor might help you get this sort of mixing pattern on here, but um, I think I'm going to do it mostly with washes. Okay, I'm ready to cut this apple open. And let's see, how should I best do this? I think I'm just going to cut it this way, straight down the middle. Well, actually, I'm going to try something different. I wouldn't normally do it this way, so I'm going to try doing it this way and cut little by little from the bottom first. And this is interesting. I was curious about curious about that bottom part. And so how would the best way to draw this be? Maybe Oh, it'd be cool if I showed the knife slicing it. Or even just a cartoon version of the knife. Okay, I'm not getting, I'm trying not to get too precious about this nature journaling and that's one of the great things about nature journaling compared to other art is uh, once you realize what nature journaling is really about then it's very liberating and you don't have to worry so much about how each thing looks and what I've noticed is when you're not worried about how each drawing looks you draw more and when you draw more things start to look better sort of automatically and you don't have to fuss about it so just let yourself feel that liberty okay here we go now we're getting into the middle oh and we're getting close this is cool I've never cut into one of these this way before and I, I can see I'm getting just to the oh wow look at how the skin tore right there that's kind of cool that must be the side where the knife came out on Okay, and I see that, that star pattern coming out even more now in this slice. One thing I noticed that I've never noticed before is this first outer star part goes this way, and then the next one where the seed, the actually lines up with the seeds, goes to the insides of these corners instead of the outsides of those points. So that, I almost drew that wrong 
because in my mind, it, I, I would have thought that it would go the other way. So that's one thing about nature journaling. When your observation contradicts the way you think something should be, make sure to take a note of that. Because when your observation contradicts the way that you think the world should be, that's an important piece of information for you. And those are often the ones that we skip over. And I should make a note about that. Like, I didn't think this would line up that way. Okay, now, back to here. I'm beginning to see this tunnel. And now where's the tunnel on the other side? Okay, things are gonna start getting interesting. I see, um, I'm starting to see the frass there and my light's actually starting to fade right now. But, and there's also these weird point things. Those one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten weird, ten weird dots. All right, here we go. So I tried to make this slice thin because this is where it's gonna get exciting. And there could be a worm still in here, potentially. There's mold, some of the frass is moldy, but the edges of the apple itself are not moldy. That's interesting. So why questions are weird. I've noticed that uh, why questions a lot of times can be broken down into other questions. So it's really common to, why questions are sort of open-ended and um, these seeds are all messed up and there's not that much damage around the fruit. So what I was gonna say about why questions is my first thing that I, I was noticing is that the, fr the whole fruit is dented where this um, hole from the worm going in is. And I was wondering why is it dented like that? Then the more, the better way to dissect that why question would be my, what I'm actually really curious about is how did that form? So I'm gonna write that down. How did that dent form? because I'm actually curious about, what I'm really curious about is if the apple shrank there after the worm went in or if it's just random that there's a whole a, a dent there or maybe the worm liked the spot where there was a dent. I know they say in, in um, orchard management that if there's two fruit bumped against each other, they're more likely, the worms are more likely to go in and last spout. So anyways, I am gonna start wrapping this up pretty soon and let me just put some of that red color onto these bad boys here. Um, and I'm gonna mix in some quinacridone pink there because they actually have quite a bit of a pink color. That might be a little bit strong, but I no longer have my original apple to paint, so I'm gonna kind of guess at where these colors come in. Um, and it would be good to probably do it in multiple washes, which would be called glazing. And that's a good way to achieve some rich colors, but I'm going to just kind of go fast, nature journaler style, and see if I can just get the overall feeling of the colors. Because my main goal is not to create a perfect painting of a realistic apple, because actually lots of people have already done that. My goal has been to practice nature journaling for 35 minutes today, even though it's smoky outside and I could make lots of excuses not to nature journal. I'm almost out of paper, et cetera, et cetera. And my main goal is to practice just asking questions and I noticed a lot of things were actually way more interesting about this apple than I would have expected and that I would have taken it for granted if I hadn't nature journaled it. So I'm really grateful right now for this apple and the opportunity to learn some things, especially things that I wasn't expecting to find out about. So this video is just meant to motivate you. There's no excuses not to nature journal. Even if you're stuck at home, you can find an apple. Even if you don't have a caigua, even if you don't have a chila coyote or something weird, even if you can't go out to a park, there is an opportunity for you to nature journal. Even just a humble apple like this has many things 
that you have taken for granted your whole life and you could probably learn a lot more about. So I'm gonna show you this page that I got so far, just doing a quick little bit of color on here, not getting too precious about anything. Maybe I'll add a teeny bit of color later, but that's not my main goal. And I need to write the date, and I'm gonna write down which of these nature journal challenges I accomplished, but that's basically it right there. All right, so I hope if you live in Northern California, in the San Francisco Bay Area, I hope you're doing all right with all the smoke outside. And I'm just here at home getting a little stir crazy cabin fever and doing some nature journaling in my pajamas. So if I can do it, I have lots of excuses not to nature journal today, you can do it too. Our excuses are just weak. Come on, you can do it.